Good afternoon. My name is Victor Mackhart. I'm a member of the Friends Board, and I thought I'd like to uh, read some poetry to you. And these books, poems, come from a book. It's a, it's a 1937 American literature book, American literature for the high school. And it's the guys and gals that had it back there in the 1930s. As you can see, they, uh, they spent a lot of time doodling and writing their names and stuff inside of it. Um, it's written, it is, it's edited by the Henry Garland Bennett. He is the president of the Oklahoma Agricultural and Mechanical College in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and was published in 1935. And so I'm going to read some poems from you, and you'll get a taste of some of the some of the poems of this, from this period. And some of them are quite some are quite fun, some quite interesting, and some kind of spooky. The first one is Annabelle Lee, by Edgar Allan Poe. It is many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. She was a child and I was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabel Lee, with a love that winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud by night, chilling my Annabel Lee, so that her high-born kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels not half so happy in heaven when envying her and me Yes, that was a reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down in the sea could ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the new moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee, and the stars never rise, but I see the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life, my bride, in her sepulcher here by the sea in her tomb here by the sea. And then we'll go on to something a bit, maybe you might consider a little bit of an answer. And we'll go on to page 130. This poem is called Evolution by John Bannister Tabbs. Out of the dusk, a shadow, then a spark. Out of the cloud, a silence, then a lark. Out of the heart, a rapture, and then a pain. Out of the dead, cold ashes, life again. Next one. This is Linda, Lucinda Matlock by Edgar Lee at Masters. It's from the Spoon River Anthology. I went to the dances at Chancellorville and played snap out at Winchester. One time we changed partners driving home in the moonlight of middle June and then I found Davis. We were married and lived together for 70 years, enjoying working and raising the 12 children, eight of which we lost ere we had reached the age of 60. I spun, I wove, I kept house, I nursed the sick, I made the garden, and for holiday, rambled over the fields where sang the larks. And by Spoon River, I gathered many a shell and many a flower and medicinal weed, shouting to the wooded hills, singing to the green valleys, at 96, I had lived enough, that is all. 
and I passed to a sweet repose. What is this I hear of sorrow and weariness, anger, discontent, and drooping hopes? Degenerate sons and daughters, life is too strong for you. It takes love, it takes life to love life. Okay, then we'll go to Little Orphan Danny, 109. And this is a little bit different vein of humor. Little Orphan Annie by James Whitcomb Riley. Little Orphan Annie, she knows the riddles, rhymes, and things, knows about witches that rides, brooms, and impses that flies with wings, the same as bats and lightning bugs, and knows about ring maries that this can take and turn themselves into anything they please. And children all, both great and small, she says and rolls her eyes. When we're listening all so still, you needn't be so surprised if right this living minute, before you know what's about, that the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. Little orphan Annie's come to our house to stay and wash the cups and saucers up and brush the crumbs away. And see the chickens off the porch and dust the hearth and sweep and make the fire and bake the bread and earn her bread and keep. And all us other children, when the supper things is done, we sit around the kitchen fire and has the mostest fun a listening to the witch tales that Annie tells about and the goblins that get you if you don't watch out. Once there was a little boy who wouldn't say his prayers and when he went to bed at night, Way upstairs. His mammy heard him holler, and his daddy heard him bawl, and when they turned the kivers down, he wasn't there at all. And they seeked him in the rafter room, and cubby hole and press, and seeked him up the chimbley flue, and ever, wherever, s, everywhere, s, I guess. But then they, but all they found was just this, his pants and roundabout, and the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. And one time a little girl would always laugh and grin and make fun of everyone and all her blood and kin. And once when there was company and old folks was there, she mocked him and shocked him and said she didn't care. At this she kicked her heels and turned to run and hide. There was two great big black things a standing by her side. And they snatched her through the ceiling for she knew what she was about. And the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. And little orphan Annie says, when the blaze is blue and the lamp wick sputters and the wind goes woo, and you hear the crickets quit and the moon is gray and lightning bugs and dew is all squenched away, you better mind your parents and your teachers fond and dear and cherish them that loves you and dry the orphan's tear. And help the need, poor and needy ones that clusters all about. Or the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. The next one is called Seeing Things by Eugene Field. I ain't afeard of snakes or toads or bugs or worms or mice. And things that girls are scared of, I think they're awful nice. I'm pretty brave, I guess. And yet, I hate to go to bed, for when I'm tucked up warm and snug, and when my prayers are said, Mother tells me happy dreams, and takes away the light, and leaves me lying all alone, and seeing things at night. Sometimes they're in the corner, sometimes they're by the door, sometimes they're all a-standing in the middle of the floor. Sometimes they're sitting down, sometimes they're walking round, so softly and so creepy-like, they never make a sound. Sometimes they're black as ink, and other times they're white. But the color ain't no difference when you see things at night. Once when I licked a feller that had just moved on our street, and father sent me up to bed without a bite to eat, I woke up in the dark and saw things standing in a row, a looking at me cross-eyed and pointing at me. So, 
Oh my, I was so scared that time I never slept a mite. It's almost always when I'm bad that I see things at night. Lucky thing I ain't a girl or I'd be scared to death. Being a boy, I duck my head and hold my breath. And I am also sorry I'm a naughty boy. And then I promise to be better and I say my prayers again. Grandma tells me that's the only way to make it right when a fella has been wicked and sees things at night. And so when other naughty boys would coax me into sin, I try to squash the tempter's voice that urges with, at me within. And when there's pie for supper or cakes as big and nice, I want to, but I do not pass my plate for them things twice. No, I'd rather let starvation wipe me slowly out of sight than I should keep a living on and seeing things at night. And then we get to something a little more 122, a little more, just a little more poetic ethereal, so to speak. 122. And this is by Carl Sandburg. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a little poem about Chicago on a foggy night and on the Great Lakes. Fog by Carl Sandburg. The fog comes in on little cat feet. It sits looking over the harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. And then we have the last one. One through two. And this was, a, for many years, something you memorized back when I was a kid in the 40s and 50s and even earlier. The book poem is called Trees by Joyce Kilmer. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. The end. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. All right, we'll start. Okay, just to finish off this, my poetry reading, this book again came from um, the American Literature. It was a high school book printed in 1935. And uh, it can be, uh, you can purchase this book or others like it with all with those poems in it uh, at the uh, Historical Museum at Fort Missoula's uh, online book sale that is going to be, to, for this year, hopefully the only time, we replace our regular book sale. And uh, so that these books are, this book is in with that sale and it's available if you want to buy it.